Okay, uh, I hope everybody can hear me. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize. We're um, suffering slight technical difficulties today. Um, basically, if Ingrid uses her headset, she can't hear me, and if she do uh, doesn't use her headset, I can hear me. So the fact is we're going to have to try and uh, mute and unmute as necessary, and hopefully that will work. It might be a little bit awkward with the question and answer session, but uh, there's not a lot we can do about that, I'm afraid. Uh, okay, so anyway, let let me start by um, by giving everybody a big welcome who's joining us today. Uh, as you're no doubt aware, this webinar, which is the 10th in the WDS webinar series, will give an introduction to the new DSA WDS common certification that's expected to be adopted by the two organizations following International Data Week. Although the main points you're about to hear will also be covered during the WDS Members Forum, uh, we thought it beneficial for WDS members, and especially regular members who may not be able to make it to Denver, to see what we have in store and to gain some familiarity with it. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to our speaker for this presentation, Ingrid Dillo. Ingrid is extremely well positioned to give a talk on this. She is not only Deputy Director of Data Archiving and Network Services, DANS, which was heavily involved in setting up the data seal of approval and is on the DSA board, in fact, but she's also Vice Chair of the WDS Scientific Committee. In addition, Ingrid co-chairs the RDA WDS Interest Group on Certification of Digital Repositories and was highly influential in bringing together DSA and WDS to form a partnership under the umbrella of this interest group. She's even found time in her busy schedule to participate in the working group. So before I hand you over to Ingrid, uh, a quick reminder that you can add questions for the end of the presentation anytime through the question and answer panel. Um, and please use the chat panel for any technical issues. So uh, thank you everyone again, and I'll pass you over to Ingrid, and we'll just give that a sec. So there's Ingrid's presentation. Ingrid is now the presenter, and I will mute myself. Are you there, Ingrid? I don't think anybody can hear you if you are. Ah, you're still muted. And there we go. Muted. There we go. Can you hear me now? Okay. okay. Yes, we can. Yeah? Yes, we can. Okay, then we start. And I want to start by thanking Rory for this kind introduction. And again, a very warm welcome to you all. Um, and I would like to start by saying that I'm really very pleased to be able to speak to you this afternoon or this morning or whatever it is at your end about the new common requirements for certification of regular WDS members. Unfortunately, we are not all together today in um, a conference room, and we are going to do this in a virtual way. And I'm very aware of the fact that this means that it will be more difficult to catch and also to hold on to your attention. And therefore, I tried to create at least some visually attractive slides with a lot of pictures for you. And I expect to be talking around 30 minutes so that will leave us enough time um, for questions from your side. So let me see whether I can get the next slide up. There we are. So a short overview. What we are going to do is um, to have a look at these new common requirements. And like Rory already said, this is also a first possibility um, to have a discussion and for those of you who are coming to Denver to prepare for the discussion that we will have over there um, in person about um, the new requirements. Um, what I would like to do in this half hour is to start with a little bit of talk about the um, general importance of trust and of certification. And from there, I want to take you to the different certification levels that are available and the global framework in which you can place them. 
and then we will arrive at the real focus of this presentation, namely the core level certification and the newcomer requirements themselves. So I would like to start by showing you um, one sentence from a report that was written at the end of 2014 by the European branch of the Research Data Alliance um, that is called the Data Harvest. And in that report there is this quote, perhaps the biggest challenge in sharing data is trust. How do you create a system robust enough for scientists to trust that if they share, their data won't be lost or garbled, stolen or misused. I think that is a very fundamental question and challenge that we all face um, as repositories as well. Trust is at the very heart of storing data and also sharing data. And I think this is so for a number of stakeholders, all for different reasons, by the way. The users, reusers of data from a digital repositories have all kinds of questions like, have the data been preserved properly? Are they of high quality? And for example, does the pointer get me to the right object that I want to see? The depositors of data, they want to be sure that in the digital repositories, their data are safe, remain accessible, remain usable, and also meaningful over time. Another large group of stakeholders when it comes to sharing data are the funders. They want the reassurance that their investment in the production of valuable research data is not wasted, but will remain also in the future, so that they will have reuse of those data and that will give them a high return on their initial in the, in, um, investment. So trust is very important. But then the question is, what is trust really built on? And I think that the basic pillars of trust are quite generic and they are applicable in all kinds of relationships, both private as well as professional. First of all, if you want people to trust you, you need to dedicate yourself. So for an organization, that means that you need to have a clear mission statement. You have to do what you promise. You need to be stable, sincere, and have a competent reputation. And it's also very good if you want people to trust you that you are transparent. So peer review certification is a good thing to do because then you have external eyes looking at you. Then the question is, what is a trustworthy digital repository? And that is not so easy to determine because we all know that things and organizations are not always what they say they are, and things do not always exactly state what they are. So that leads me um, to this page of the UK Data Archive. Um, I very much like one of the sentences, one of the, the um, claims that they have on their website. They say, as you can read here, that any organization which provides access to data over a long period of time should be fully trusted only with a public statement that describes the practices that they follow and also the provenance of the data that they provide. Standards of trust are critical, it says. And I think that standards can play indeed a very important role in establishing that trust. And there has long been a demand for some way to evaluate, to assess the trustworthiness of digital repositories. And over, let's say, the last decade, a number of such evaluation standards guidelines have become available. And these standards, of course, not only, not only take into account the technical aspects, infrastructure, all kinds of standards, but they look um, at a complete range of aspects um, that concern a repository, organizational elements, finance, staffing, legal aspects, workflows, risk management, um, continuity planning, etc., etc. So um, over, let's say, the last decade, we have seen in Europe um, emerging a framework of different certification levels. And the emergence of this framework was also pushed by the European Commission. And you could say that we have a nice um, pair of stairs that have um, different steps. 
And at the baseline, we have core certification. And core certification, the European framework states, is granted to digital repositories that obtain the data seal of approval, the DSA. So that is the first step on the ladder of um, certification. The next step that requires a little bit more from repositories is the so-called extended certification. This certification is granted to repositories that perform a structured and externally reviewed and also publicly available self-audit that is based on um, a DIN standard, a German standard that I will go into a little bit later, um, and which is also called the Nestor seal. More about that in a minute. And then finally, at the top of the stairs, you have the possibility for repositories to go through a formal certification procedure um, based on the um, ISO 16363 standard. More about that later. So in Europe, we see um, this framework emerging, and also the European Commission has invested in this. But there is more um, in the world, because we also have the certification procedure of WDS. And in this pyramid, you see all of them together, and you can see that both um, the certification standard of um, the World Data System, as well as the data seal of approval, are placed on the core level um, of um, the core level of certification, and above them you see Nestor and ISO, like I um, explained. So before I zoom in on this core level certification, I want to say a few words about the other levels. First of all, the extended certification. As you know, um, the WDS certification procedure has a limited number of requirements. If a repository wants to go through the extended certification, this number grows because uh, the German standard has 34 criteria and was um, written by a group of um, archives, libraries, and museums in Germany called the Nestor Group. And their um, uh, catalog of criteria has been adopted by the formal standards organization in um, Germany called DIN. The procedure contains um, a self-assessment based on these 34 criteria, and then uh, this assessment is reviewed by two reviewers appointed by Nestor. You have uh, to place your self-assessment as well as evidence on the web to make yourself um, to show to make yourself transparent and show people what you have um, to offer. And at the moment, as far as I know, two seals have been acquired. Um, one by the National Library in Germany and the other one by my own organization, DANS. And if you want to go even further, you come um, at the point of the ISO 16363 um, standard. Um, this standard um, is um, really a lot more work. It contains about 100 requirements and goes um, into um, a large, um, into um, a lot of detail. Um, it also um, concerns a formal auditing process. So this means that you will have auditors um, on the work floor looking over the shoulder of the people working in the repository to see how they do their work. Um, there is also a separate ISO standard um, that you can see here, 16919, that deals with the requirements for the bodies that provide this audit and um, certification against the ISO standard. And at the moment, this whole um, process of getting auditing bodies in place um, is um, in progress by ISO, and this is done on a national basis. So in each country, people have to be trained, and an auditing body has to be um, formally appointed. So this means that it's um, um, taking quite a while, and at the moment, it is not yet um, possible to go through a formal ISO certification. But of course, you can use um, the standard um, to do your own self-assessment against uh, the different uh, metrics or criteria in this standard. So then we come to um, the stuff that this webinar is really about. Core certification, the basic level of certification. You are all familiar with um, the certification accreditation procedure of WDS which is a lightweight certification procedure for both regular and network members. 
It is based on the self-assessment. This self-assessment is reviewed, and this review process is overseen by the scientific committee of um, WDS. WDS has a focus um, when you look at the disciplines on the Earth and spatial sciences, and has many members in the US and Asia, as well as a number in Europe. Renewal of this certification is done um, between three and five years, and at the moment over 70 members of WDS have been accredited. Now let's look at the um, data seal of approval. The data seal of approval also offers a basic and very lightweight certification standard. It consists of 16 guidelines or requirements for repositories that relate to data producers, to the repository itself, and to data consumers. It is also based on the self-assessment, so there are no formal auditors or site visits involved, and these self-assessments are reviewed by, in a process that is supervised by the International Data Board of the Data Seal of Approval. There is an online tool available for the self-assessment and review process, and DSA is granted for a period of two years, so a very small period when you um, combine it, uh, compare it to the WDS. DSA tries to be as open, transparent as in, and inclusive as it can, so um, the self-assessments are also made public on the web uh, once a um, repository gains um, its seal. The focus of DSA, and that has to do with the fact that um, it was my organization um, that uh, was um, at the cradle of this standard, is on social sciences and humanities, and we are, with DSA, particularly strong in Europe. And this has all to do with the fact that a number of large European research infrastructures have incorporated DSA in their infrastructure. There are over 60 seals acquired at the moment, and some 50 are in progress. So that is a short um, overview of the characteristics of DSA and WDS. And um, I expect you have already noticed that they very much look alike. There are a lot of communalities. Both offer lightweight standards, both use community review, and there also is a lot of complementarity on the other hand. WDS um, has a focus on earth and spatial sciences, DSA on the social sciences and humanities, although both of them are spreading their wings. And there is also a geographical spread, DSA being strong in Europe, WDS being strong in Asia and um, the US. So now I want to move to the Research Data Alliance because that is where um, the partnership more or less uh, was born. Most of you will know this organization. Um, it's a grassroots organization and the Research Data Alliance aims to build the social and technical bridges that enable open data sharing. They have a lot of working groups and interest groups that work on a large variety of topics. And one of the to these topics was certification. And people started asking, why is there a DSA and a WDS um, certification standard that look so alike? And this um, drove us to sit together with a number of people from both communities, and we started a working group to explore and develop a partnership between the two organizations, and we have been working on that for 18 months. So why did we do this? I think the main thing, the main reason is to make the certification landscape um, simpler, to simplify the assessment options, to stimulate, of course, more certifications, to see whether we can realize efficiencies between the two organizations, and hopefully to increase the impact on the community. So what did we do? Um, we had a lot of plans. We wanted to develop a common catalog of requirements for core repository assessment. We wanted to develop common procedures, test everything in a test bed, and ultimately for the long term also to create a shared framework for certification that would also include the other standards like the Nesto seal and ISO. So the main product of this working group has been this new catalogue of common requirements. And these requirements touch upon a number of issues. 
there are um, more or less the same number of requirements that already existed with WDS and DSA, and they deal with the context of the repository. A number of requirements concern the organizational infrastructure. There is a lot about digital object management a little bit about the technology, and finally, there is the possibility for applicants to give any additional information and also feedback on the procedure and the requirements themselves. What is also new is that um, the catalog contains compliance levels. So for each requirement, it is possible to state where you are in the process, how compliant um, the repository is. A requirement might be not applicable. You might not have thought about the um, issues um, at hand yet. Maybe you already developed a theoretical concept. You might even be in the implementation phase. And if you have four stars, the guideline has been fully implemented in the repository. This is um, a possibility for the repositories themselves um, to fill out, and it, the idea behind this is that we would like to foster the applicant's own understanding of uh, the current status, the current maturity of the repository. So I want to go through the different um, um, categories with you, and I will do um, this in a very uh, concise way um, because we will have enough time later on to go deeper into um, the requirements. The context requirement asks you to describe your, the type of your repository, um, describe your designated community, the level of curation that you perform, and if applicable, you can also um, list your outsource partners for certain requirements in this first um, box. Then there are a number of um, requirements that deal with the organizational infrastructure. You, are, you need to have an explicit mission to provide access to and preserve data in its domain. You also need to maintain um, all applicable licenses covering access and use of um, the data, and you need also to monitor compliance. For example, you need to describe the license agreements that you use, your conditions of use, and also um, you need to provide documentation on the measures that you will take in the case of non-compliance with all of these um, licenses. Then there is a um, requirement that deals with the continuity of access. You need to have a continuity plan to ensure this access to your holdings. Then there is a requirement that deals with confidentiality and ethics. And I think for many of the WDS um, organizations, it will be, will be a new one, and that is also perfectly understandable when you look at the fact that WDS started off in the Earth and Spatial Sciences, where this is less maybe um, an issue. This requirement says that the repository ensures that data are created, curated, accessed, and used in compliance with disciplinary and ethical norms. And I will come back to that later. Then there is a um, requirement on um, the presence of adequate funding and sufficient numbers of qualified staff. You need to show um, that you have expert guidance, either in-house or externally. Still all to do with the organizational infrastructure. And then if we continue, we get a number of requirements that deal with digital object management, which are more focused um, on the workings of the repository. This has to do, as you can see in requirement seven, about the integrity and the authenticity of your data. That has to do um, with the way that you appraise the data and the metadata that you kept to make sure that they are relevant and understandable for the users. Um, in your um, designated community. You need to um, give evidence that you have documented your storage procedures. And if we continue, you see that we also ask about the availability of a preservation plan because you assume the responsibility for the long-term preservation of the data that you hold. Then there is a requirement on data quality. Um, you have to show that you have the appropriate expertise in-house to address the technical data and metadata quality. 
of your holdings. Then there is a requirement on workflows. You have to show that you um, have um, everything um, in place and that you work according to defined workflows from the ingest of data to the dissemination of data. You have to enable the users to discover the data and also give them the possibility to cite them in a proper way and to uh, make them persistent. So you need to give out uh, persistent identifiers. And then there is a um, requirement that concerns the reuse of data over time. So you need to make sure that there are appropriate metadata that support the understanding and the use of the data also in a longer period of time. Finally, two um, um, requirements that deal with the technology. On the one hand, you have to um, describe your technical infrastructure. On the other hand, there are some questions about security. You need to make sure that you protect your facility, the data, the products, the services, and the users. So here you see one page out of this catalogue of common requirements, the one that deals with the um, confidentiality and the ethics. And here you can see um, this um, star system of compliance levels in the right-hand corner. You see an empty box where you can um, give your response um, and your evidence. And below that, you can see that we also give some guidance. We give some explanation of um, the requirement, and we also give some examples. Here we talk about the risk of um, individuals in data that might be identified or the precise location, for example, of an endangered species that can be pinpointed, and how you, um, what do you do to uh, prevent that? So um, does the repository request confirmation that the data collection was carried out in accordance with the legal and ethical criteria in a field, for example? You have to give any special procedures that you have to manage data with disclosure risk you have to show that maybe you train your staff in the management of data with disclosure risk. So you are taken by the hand through an ex a guidance text and also through um, suggested questions that you could answer so that you can fill out a, a, an adequate response. And below on the page, you can also see that we refer to other requirements that are related to this requirement. And I see I need to hurry up because I'm almost through my half hour. So if you compare these requirements, these new requirements, with the um, present WDS requirements, I would say that there are no huge differences, although the structure of the catalog has been slightly changed and there are some different accents. I also think there is more emphasis on documented procedures and planning, and I think that is a good thing. So um, we also talked in this working group about setting up common procedures. So one of the things we um, decided is to uh, strongly encourage um, URLs to evidence. We encourage this maturity rating, um, these compliance levels. And we also um, would like to make the self-assessments once um, the um, peer review has been positive to be publicly available. And I want to stress that, of course, this means, does not mean that any sensitive evidence should be on the web. Of course, sensitive evidence can be excluded. But in general, we believe that it's good that the repository shows the outside world what it can offer and also what it can't offer. Furthermore, we will have renewals every three years, so not every three to five. So this is a shortening of the period. But um, with the shorter period, there are likely to be less changes as well. And we will also look at the activity reporting to compensate for the possibly extra time that you have to put in here. For the longer, longer um, time frame, we will also try to look at uh, pooling um, the, the pools, bringing together the pools of reviewers of both DSA and WDS. And we um, really want to work together to implement and steward the partnership even more. So we also run a test bed with the new common requirements in which we had two DSA applicants and four WDS applicants. And I must say that the results were overall very positive. Everyone really thought that the new requirements were a, an improvement. 
it will lead to a number of minor tweaks and we need to put in some more explanation but overall it seems that everyone thinks that this is really um, has really been a good thing so what will happen in the coming months um, both DSA and WDS will launch the new catalogue of requirements um, at the International Data Week in September in Denver. We can have a further discussion of these requirements in the WDS Members Forum over there. And we plan to have later this year a follow-up webinar to look at each of the requirements in more detail. And then we will look both from the applicant's point of view as well as the reviewer's point of view. So WDS will hopefully start working with these new requirements as of the 1st of October this year. And then, in fact, we will have one common standard body that rules the new catalogue of, of um, requirements. That will be a combined DSA WDS um, effort, but we will still have two different certification authorities. DSA on the one hand and WDS on the other hand, and hopefully in future this will change as well, and we will be able to create a joint authority to bestow both DSA and WDS certification at once. And of course we will keep on doing outreach to the other standards, because I think that this idea of a framework is a very good idea, especially when you have the situation that the effort you put in for um, one level is also um, a step in the direction of the next level. So you can use everything, all the effort that you have put into basic or core certification into the extended one and go uh, take it from there. So with that, I think that I have come um, to the end of my presentation. I would like to thank you uh, for listening. I hope you are still there. And if you have questions, um, I'm very willing to answer them for you. Over to Rory. Okay, I'm going to mute. Okay, you I'm going to mute you very quickly, Ingrid. Um, so thank you so much to Ingrid for that. Um, um, and before we think about uh, questions, uh, and at the moment I've only got one, so I don't know if they're coming through slow. Oh no, actually we have a second one. Um, uh, so we'll, we'll ask these and give you a few minutes to think, but we've got about 15 minutes that we can, uh, we can take a look at these. But I also wanted to state that obviously um, this is not it done in isolation. Um, you are very welcome to send us questions uh, to the IPO uh, at our usual email address, and we will answer them. And obviously, again, there will be more discussion that can be had um, at uh, International Data Week at the Members Forum. Uh, so, uh, like I said, I'll gi we'll give you a little bit of time to think if, uh, if there are any other questions, but let me start with the, the two that we have. Um, so the first one is from uh, Rama, who is representing uh, NASA ESTIS uh, and uh, the DAX, and he asks, uh, how does the maturity model here compare with the recent one from AGU? Uh, so I'll let Ingrid, I'll let answer, Ingrid that. answer that. Thank you, Rory. I'm afraid I can't, I must confess that I can't answer that question because I come from the social sciences and humanities side and I'm not familiar with um, this recent maturity model that was, um, um, uh, that arose from AGU. So I don't know whether you, Rory, know about that, but I'm afraid I can't answer that question. Uh, I must admit that I also, well, I, uh, from, I'm discipline agnostic, I suppose, but um, I uh, was not at AGU, so I'm also not aware of it, but um, I will ask those who were there and who know more about it, and maybe we can send you a quick email on that, uh, Rama. Um, I would say that, um, that th m these maturity ratings are something that DSA has always done, um, and it's something that WDS talked about, um, and we felt it was worth adding, but... Um, not to be too strong-armed about it, that it was really some, uh, something that was very useful, we felt, for someone's own understanding, but should not be 
a rod to beat uh, someone's back with. Um, so uh, if uh, someone decided to mark themselves down a little bit, then the reviewers might notice that, but it's the, really the evidence that uh, they're concentrating on. Um, I don't know if there's if there's anything you want to add to that, Ingrid. Want to add to that, Ingrid? Yeah, well, within um, the data seal of approval, we have um, earlier on defined, uh, let's say, minimum levels of uh, compliance that we wanted repositories to have for the different requirements in order to give out um, seals. But in the end, I think it's the way we have organized it now and make it um, a possibility for applicants to use in their own interest might be even better because I think the most important um, aspect of this is that you try to be inclusive. So also repositories that are not yet um, in a state in which they um, could get um, an, um, a certification, they can use it as a kind of benchmark, see where they stand, where there, um, where there are issues that they need to take care of. Um, so have people that are not ready yet also um, give them the possibility to use um, this um, catalog in a, in, a, in a way that they can improve themselves. So inclusiveness is very important, I think. Yeah, I, I think I'd agree with that. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, we will uh, look into maybe uh, giving you a more complete answer, Rama, through email. Uh, so the next question is uh, from uh, Bernard, Bernard Minster, the former chair of the Scientific Committee. Um, and he asks, uh, was there any feedback or opinion offered by the other certification bodies, such as Nestor or ISO? So I'll leave you to answer yeah, that. Yeah, I'll leave you to answer that. Chris? Yes, we haven't yet because um, we are still, um, the common requirements are finished, let's say the catalogue for 99%. We, we still need to um, do a little bit of tweaking um, on the basis of the outcomes of the test bed. So we didn't ask the people from Nestor and ISO formally on, uh, about their opinion of, of, of this new catalogue. But I do know also from discussions that we have had within um, the um, research state, context of the Research Data Alliance, that people, especially from ISO, um, are very happy with this um, development and that they also have the feeling that um, the catalog that we have now um, is an improvement um, when you compare it to the old um, WDS and BSA um, criteria. So I think everybody has the feeling that we um, are moving in the right direction. Um, although I must say that the Nestor community is um, really quiet in the international arena. Um, I, my feeling is that their first focus is on Germany, although they have their um, criteria available in English, so you can always have a look at them. Uh, and I, I will add to that very briefly that, of course, we did do a, a sanity check um, with the new common requirements uh, to make sure that uh, that they made sense in the context of the other um, certifications, the extended and the formal, because of course we do want this to be a potential um, step uh, on the ladder. Um, so um, we want to make sure that anyth anything that we, we have is uh, com in completely usable if you do wish to go further. Um, and, uh, I'm not sure if there's anything else to say on that. Do you, do you have Matt, anything else, do you, Ingrid? Do you have anything else, Ingrid? No, I think that is more or less what we can say about it this moment. But I think that it's a good suggestion to, to go back maybe to the ISO and the NESTA communities when we have finalized um, the catalog um, and discuss with them again what they think of it and how they see the relation with um, their extended and formal level of certification. So we, sh we should definitely keep that in mind. And that also fits in, in what I said before about um, keeping in touch and trying to work 
further work on this um, international framework of all certification levels. Okay, so let's move on to the next one, and uh, it's Rammer again, and this is one that I guessed was going to come up, um, and I did warn Ingrid that it was going to come up. Uh, recertification every three years seems too frequent uh, for long-term organizations. Once in five years seems better. Why the change? Well, um, oh, Ingrid. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, this has been a point of discussion, of course, also in in in, in the group um, of DSA and WDS people. Like I said in my talk, DSA now has um, a two-year period of certification. Um, the renewal period within WDS was between three and five years. The feeling at DSA was that two years is very short. Um, on the other hand, five years is very long because although we are talking about organizations with a long-term mission, um, the world around us, the data world, is changing very rapidly. Techniques are changing, um, players are coming and going. So the feeling was that a three-year period um, seems like um, a reasonable period in between the two and the five. And of course, we are aware of the fact that this um, um, adds to the burden of um, the WDS members. Uh, but on the other hand, in a five-year period of time, more will happen than in a three-year period. So maybe um, it will not take you as long um, to come up with a new self-assessment, a, a renewal document, than it would do after five years. And I would also like to stress that we are looking at the activity reporting to compensate for this. And we are thinking about um, aligning these two so that you are, will be required to uh, come up with material only once every three years. Am I right in that, Rory? Mm -hmm. uh, you are indeed, uh, yes. You are indeed, yes. Yeah. So I think that is the answer. Uh, again, I, I can add maybe a tiny bit to say that obviously there is no site assessment with this. There was the potential for a site assessment before, on-site assessment um, uh, with uh, previously in WDS. Um, and that has now been removed. Um, and I, my understanding is that um, the ISO standard will be around once every five years, including a site visit. Um, so I think the idea was that we can't be on the same level as, as them. I, I mean, I, I think that's correct. Is it not, Ingrid? Not Ingrid? Yes, that's correct. That was one of the aspects that we found. Okay, so um, I'm, again, I'm pretty sure that's going to come up um, during the members forum. So we'll we'll um, move on a little bit from that now, and maybe have a good discussion there. Um, but I wanted because we we've only got a couple of minutes left to move on to the a couple of other questions that we've got. Um, one is from uh, Frederick Klett. Uh He says, "I'm surprised." that data quality appears only as one single criterion among many others. Why such a low emphasis, emphasis on the prime value of scientific data? Um, so uh, I should also say that Frederick Klett is from uh, WDC Silso, and we will hear a little bit from him at the Members Forum about uh, their, his facility. Uh, anyway, let me uh, unmute Ingrid and... Uh, Hopefully, she has an answer to this. Well, the answer that I would give um, to this is that, of course, implicitly, all of these requirements um, lead to the fact that the data that you have in your repository is of a higher quality. So, um, implicitly, they all deal 
and have an effect on, on the quality of the data that are in the repository. And of course, um, this is not so much about, this doesn't say too much about, let's say, the scientific quality of the data. That is, um, um, I think, the responsibility in the first instance of um, the creator of the data, so of science, and it, that has all, uh, all to do with scientific integrity. But I think that all the requirements that we have in this catalog add to, let's say, the technical quality of the data in as far as a repository has um, an influence on that. I think that's the best answer that I can give you. Yes, I think, um, I think you've answered that incredibly well, Ingrid. Um, and we have one more question, which is kind of the, uh, probably a good way to wrap this up, uh, because we've reached our time limit. Uh, it, the question is from uh, Kehi Wang, who's uh, in Australia at uh, the uh, Space Science uh, Data Center there. Um, is this presentation available for download and where? The answer is, at this moment in time, it's not. Uh, it will be up on the WDS website probably tomorrow. Um, and uh, I, I will let you know once that's been done. Um, so that's give, reached the end of our, our list. So I want to um, thank both Ingrid again for her presentation and all of you for, for joining us. Uh, and to say uh, I look forward to meeting with a number of you in, in Denver, and uh, for those who are unable to attend, I hope to see you again somewhere soon. Um, but again, if you have any further questions on this, uh, please do not hesitate to email us at the IPO, and we can, uh, we can certainly hope answer uh, your, your queries. So I'll, I'll just leave Ingrid to, uh, to say the final words, and uh, then we can uh, we can finish. So I think I will just echo the words uh, of Rory. Thank you all very much for joining this webinar and for listening to me for over half an hour. That is very um, impressive of you. And I hope to meet many of you um, next week or the week after in Denver in person. Thanks very much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.